Prepare for a clinic on the Royal Witchcraft Three Star Clan War Attack. Greetings fellow fans of Clash of Clans, thanks for stopping by and spending a few minutes of your day with Clash of Clans attacks as yes, we explore clan war perfection, also known as improving on others attacks, and yes, we've got a 3 star clinic going on, Royal Witchcraft, a solid clan war 3 star attack strategy, works out well on this type of base right here. The four corners base, especially when there's at least one single target inferno. I've practiced this several times now. It's time to go in and see if I can't finally grab a three star using the strategy. So I dropped in the king on the right hand side, the queen on the left, and the jump spell to let the witches go down the middle. Unfortunately, I forgot to drop the golem with the king. So that might have made a little bit of a difference later on in the attack. I've got the golem going down the center here, which actually does work out pretty well because I lose the giant. And now the golem is going to lead the way for the witches, hopefully triggering any giant bombs so they don't fall victim to them. Now the king worked his way through. The queen is over there dealing with the lava hound, which works out well enough. She'll be occupied for a while, but shouldn't be too badly damaged with the healers helping her out. Now the witches are already on their way over that center jump spell. The king doing his job down the right hand side. The queen still battling the lava hound. So we've got the poison spell, the rage spell in the center, getting those skeletons just to generate more and more and more. We've got the near inferno tower down and unfortunately we're stuck dealing with a far multi inferno along with two of the three expos. But we are gradually starting to overrun that center enclosure. The town hall taking some serious damage should fall any moment and then hopefully we can move on through and get the rest of the structures down in the core as the heroes are again on the outside doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing although I have had to use both heroes abilities at this point. The skeleton army is becoming bigger all the time in the center and it should eventually take care of all of those defensive structures. The queen back up to full health, the king just about to fall but he got most of his job done. Unfortunately, look on the far right, there are several structures now that have no other units to clean them up and that could be a factor later on in this attack. The witches are all still pretty much up, but right here, I wish the Barbarian King could have gotten one more structure down if he had only gotten around the corner and gotten to that mortar. You can see that it is starting to take the witches down in large packs at a time. Now they have gotten through that back wall and the queen is at full health, 77% damage, really starting to close in. If we can get these last two splash damage structures down the mortar and the wizard tower, this could be a three star win, 79, 80% damage now. But as we remember those structures on the far right were standing and now we've got structures on the far outer left that were standing. I was a little bit careless with my deployment, did not leave any last minute wizards for cleanup and they would be invaluable, absolutely priceless right now as we're down to one defensive structure, just the archer tower and it is going to go down quickly and that leaves only time as a factor that could stop this three star raid. And as you can see, we are down to 10 seconds left and it's an impossible journey for these units to get to the other side of this village in time. Time is going to run out and so close to three stars, 97% the final score. Now I did say this was a clinic on three star wins, but I didn't say I was holding it. Sure enough, it is the father of the Royal Witchcraft attack. It is Glider going after in the same war, a very similar base design. So he drops in the Archer Queen on the right corner and then a little bit of a difference in this attack. He has got an Earthquake spell and he's going to drop it right in the dead center. Thousands of hit points and damage being done at once, softening up the entire core. And then this, I think he's just showing off. Glider marking where he's going to drop the jump spell by dropping a freeze spell first. That's right, it's the frozen jump spell. Now the Archer Queen doing well, but she's down in health right now. And here comes the Golem going to lead the way eventually where the King will go down. But I do like this idea of dropping the King a little bit later, letting the Golem Giant and Wizards get a few of the structures down first, and that's going to make the King last that much longer in the core. More Wizards coming in with the Witches. I just brought mostly Witches. 
Now the right side of the witches already cleared out by the queen. The left side just there, it got cleared by the golem and the wizards. So now those wizards and witches have a clear path right down the center and they are going after this base on the multi-inferno first, which again, makes more sense maybe than going after the single. The single much less threatening. Get the multi down with use of the rage spell on the near side and that will let the witches overrun the center much more quickly. Now again, you can see the heroes doing their job, but the king still above 50% health, the queen at full health on the right-hand side. And that is another big difference in this raid. All of those wizards taking out the expos early, and now the Iron Fist goes down and he will get the mortar down that could have been firing into the core on the wizards and witches. Speaking of the core, there goes the single target Inferno. Skeletons absolutely crushing it. And now the single is cleared out, so is the entire core. And it's a matter of getting out the exit strategy out the back. Now the Barbarian King, he has gone down, but again, he got that one mortar down. And that is a big difference. The Archer Queen ready to round the corner herself. Mortar working on the witches, mass genocide on wizards and witches between the mortar and that giant bomb. That took out about half of that core force. But nonetheless, Glider continuing to overrun this base. 88% damage and just a couple of archers on the outside making the difference by picking off those corner structures. Letting the queen focus in one direct path, closing in on the three star win. 94% damage, just a few structures remain. Plenty of attacking units left. The healers keeping the queen at full health. And there it goes, the last three structures. And Glider with a clinic on the Royal Witchcraft attack shows how it's done, gets the extra 3%, and wraps up a perfect three-star win. But that was not my most embarrassing moment in this clan war. In fact, far from it. 97% did a pretty good job. But here, I went in with my usual dragon army and I'm going after this unusually designed base here. You can see I'm going on the clan castle side. The both infernos are a little bit offset. The single, the multi, I'm going right at that air sweeper and the archer queen just waiting to move in. The dragons not really pathing like I wanted them to. You can see the rage spells a little bit spread out and a big group of dragons at the top of your screen are actually getting blown out of the rage spell. And there you can see just completely missing the rage spell at this point. I have to drop the third rage spell way off to the left and it only enrages one or two dragons itself. So things quickly going downhill, 36% damage. Finally, that giant pack of dragons is starting to move back in towards the center. Now we're working on the clan castle. If we can at least get the clan castle down, then perhaps we could get to the town hall. The one dragon is finally, but wait, what am I thinking? I drop in the ground units just seconds before the clan castle goes down and it draws out this stinking lava hound. An ultimate Galafail move right there. The clan castle would have gone down with every unit inside, but instead I've dropped the ground units in, starting to clear the walls out of the way to try to get to the town hall, not thinking ahead at all. A completely ridiculous mistake, and this is going to cost me not one star, but two, because I realize it's clan war, there's no sense in worrying about trying to get a one star win. In fact, this base design might have been more prone to a royal witchcraft style attack, except for maybe those multiple enclosures in the center. But in any case, a complete and utter fail, embarrassing. I walked away, head hung in shame after this attack, and I was not happy about my performance whatsoever. So the attack wraps up, I get zero stars, and who do we have next? It's none other than North Coast with almost the same army composition going after the same base, but he's decided to approach it from the right hand side rather than the left, focusing on getting that multi-target Inferno out of the way early. So lightning and earthquake on one of the air defenses right away, and then he's going to go ahead and send in balloons. So no lava hound like I normally send in after the second air defense. He's got a bunch of balloons that will go in the direction of the next air defense. There you can see out of the clan castle, the dragons moving in along with a few more balloons and the rage spell enraging just about every single balloon and most of the dragons as they path towards the town hall enclosure. Good rage spells there you can see well used by almost every single airborne unit as they work their way in after the Infernos. Now the dragons, they've kind of spread out, but the balloons are doing a great job and they do get the first Inferno down. Now the last rage spell right over the town hall is only gonna help out a couple of dragons, but you can see North Coast already 41% damage and the Inferno Tower 
just about to fall. Working on it is one last dragon. He gets it down. He or she, I don't know if dragons are female, but in any case, the dragon gets the second Inferno Tower down. North Coast passes 50% with the air phase of this attack. But if you look closely at the town hall, the side that I approached from had too many spaces where the queen or the king would not have very easily been able to get to it. But right here, North Coast is just going to bum rush this town hall. He's not worried about the clan castle. He's not worried about the expos or even the archer queen. The king is going to go in and cause distraction over here off towards the side. And now in comes the archer queen. The clan castle goes after the king. The queen moves right in. Giant Bomb doesn't matter. Skeleton Trap doesn't matter. She's going to use her Royal Cloak once she gets these skeletons out of the way. And before the King falls, the Archer Queen takes down the Town Hall for the second star, and that wraps up this attack. So North Coast definitely improving on my mistakes right there. So not a great war for me. In any case, both attacks got improved upon by other players, but that's what teamwork is all about. And thank you for being part of the team that gets all the way to the end of this video. Don't forget to subscribe for daily Clash of Clans content, update and sneak peek information. And I hope to see every one of you back here again tomorrow for more Full Attacks. Galligon. My day is always sunnier with a galley fail in it. Why? That means every day is sunny.